All right, my dear students, we have a question of errors and suspense account. Let me read the question for you guys. Alexandra's bookkeeper extracted the following trial balance on 30th September 22. Now, the trial balance has already been made, but uh, Alexandra is aware that the bookkeeper had made some errors in the drafting. So, while preparing this trial balance, they have made some of the errors. And as we can see, there is a suspense account in this as well. So, my dear students, whenever the trial account or trial balance does not balance, we would use a temporary account with known as suspense. So, what we need to do, we need to correct the trial balance as at 30th September 2012. Now, how to correct the trial balance? There aren't any adjustments right now. We just need to make sure that all of the items are on the correct place and what items come at what place better we have studied previously that AED nature is debit. What does AED stand for? Asset expense drawing is always debit in nature and LIC liability income and capital is credit in nature. So what we need to do better we just need to uh, place items in the correct side. First of all we'll be starting with capital. Now as you may be aware better that capital is credit in nature. Why? Because again, uh, capital belongs to LIC family liability income capital credit. So capital should remain on the credit side and the bookkeeper has also written it on the credit side. Now AED drawing uh, is always debit by 11,400. Why is drawing debit? Because it reduces our capital. Okay. Drawing 11,400 should come on the debit side. Uh, the revenue is sales and sales must always come on the credit side. Okay, why? Because the goods are going out of the business. 205,000. Then we have purchases. Purchases should remain on the debit side again. Why? Because purchases, due to purchases, our asset increases. Therefore, the purchase must come on the debit side. 117,000. So I'm writing uh, the things, uh, items on the correct side. Then return outward, but a return outward also known as purchase return and return outward is always credit in nature, but the bookkeeper has wrongly written it on the debit side. Why is return outward a purchase return being credit because the goods are going out of the business. Now we have inventory. Just remember better in trial balance. We always write opening inventory and not the closing inventory and here inventory is written on the debit side so it's correct it should be written on the debit side only then bank overdraft is a liability and liability is always credit in nature so therefore instead of writing it on the debit side we are supposed to write it on the credit side then wages is debit in nature why because wages is an expense and expense must always be written on the debit side now the rent payable, rent payable is not a liability here. Just to confuse us, the examiner, instead of writing rent expense, they are writing rent payable. So people confuse it as a liability. It's not a liability. Instead, it's an expense. Okay. And the expense must always come on which side? But the expense must come on the debit side. So instead of writing rent expense, examiner writes rent payable. And instead of writing rent income or rent receive, examiner writes rent receivable. So students confuse it with the asset because it's written as receivable, but it's not an asset beta. Instead, it's an income and income always comes on the credit side. Okay. Rent receivable is rental income. Okay. And rent payable is rental expense. Expense must come on the debit side and income on the credit side. Then we have better electricity and water and electricity and water is our expense. So I'll be writing it on the debit side. Electricity and water and how much is it? It's 5700 pounds. Then we have sundry expenses. All the expenses must come on the debit side. Then we have uh, expenses are 18750. I'm writing it on the correct side. Then we have non-current assets, but assets are always debit in nature. So the non-current assets should be written on the debit side. Then we have provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation. Just remember better that provision for depreciation is a contra asset. 
and as such it is always written on the credit side why because this reduces the value of our non current asset then we have discount allowed and it should be written on the debit side why because discount allowed is an expense whenever our customers used to pay us earlier than they promised so we are supposed to give them some discount it's an expense for the business then discount receive is the opposite of that whenever we are paying our suppliers earlier than promised then this discount received is an income for the business then trade receivables is an asset so therefore it should be written on the debit side trade receivable now as you can see a uh, few items are written wrongly by the bookkeeper so therefore we are supposed to correct them and trade payables is a liability and as such written on what side trade payables must be written on the credit side the trade payable must be written on the credit side so most of the items have been corrected and few are left trade receivables is done uh, what about trade payables trade payable is a liability it should be written on the credit side trade payables is 7270 then we have allowance for irrecoverable debt also known as provision for doubtful debt allowance or provision is an estimate okay and allowance for irrecoverable or provision for doubtful debt provision is also cre always credit in nature okay no matter whether it's provision for doubtful debt or provision for depreciation now as all of the errors are corrected technically the trial balance should now be balanced unless and until we have some other errors that do not affect balancing of the trial balance okay so normally if all of the errors are corrected then the totals of the trial balance must balance now it's time to balance the both of the sides and see whether suspense account is still required or not now let me do the balancing on both of the sides now as you can see dear students our trial balance has already balanced so this means there is no need for suspense account now okay because we have uh, successfully corrected all of the errors okay for now and all of the errors have been corrected and there are some errors that still remain uh even if the trial balance is balanced uh but all of the errors that affect the trial balance have been corrected okay let's see after the correction of the trial balance the bookkeeper completed the financial statement which shows the profit for the year so after correcting the trial balance we have uh, calculated this much of profit alexandra then found that there have been some errors in the year end adjustment when preparing financial statements now there aren't any errors in the trial balance but there were errors while acting uh, while uh, doing these adjustments so what we need to do beta we need to calculate the revised profit or corrected profit and for that sake beta we need to prepare statement of corrected profit now what is the statement of corrected profit statement of corrected profit refers to as whenever there are some errors being made and due to which the profit has now been uh, in uh, incorrect so what we need to do we need to start with a draft profit for the year draft profit is the profit that contains some of the errors and what we need to do we need to correct the errors one by one so what was the draft draft profit like in there it was 5980 pounds we are going to start with this 5980 and we need to correct errors one by one let's see error number 1 in error number 1 it says that inventory at 30 september 22 which was a closing inventory was recorded in the financial statement as 23600 the inventory count had been understated and should have been 26100 so therefore the real inventory was 26100 but we have written how much 23600 so this means we have understated the closing inventory now it's time to increase the inventory okay so beta whenever we are going to increase the inventory uh, the more closing inventory we do have 
the lower would be cost of sales and the lower is the cost of sales then the greater should be our profit so what we need to do beta the closing inventory and profit are directly proportional if we are increasing the inventory so therefore the profit should also be increased by the difference between the two and we need to add the profit by how much 25 so this was error number one let's see adjust one of the uh, errors one by one no adjustment have been made for rent receivable which was owing rent receivable is rental income and if it's an accrued income therefore it should be added in the end of the year and if we are adding the income so therefore this would increase our profit okay in error two the accrual was missed so if we add the accrual for income this would increases our profit by 2000 let's see what is about error three no adjustment have been made for sundry expenses accrued 700 and prepaid 240 now uh, as you may be aware better that the end of the year accrued is plus accrued is added at the end of the year by 700 uh, to the expense and prepaid needs to be deducted by 240 now we need to add expenses by 700 and deduct expenses by 240 so overall we need to add the expenses by how much 460 so if the sundry expenses are being increased by 460 so therefore our profit would be reduced by how much 460 profit should be reduced by 460 because of adding the expenses or increasing the expenses what about error number four let's see in error number four annual depreciation non-current set owned at the end of the year have been charged at the rate of 20 percent on cost so how much depreciation we have actually charged with a 20 percent cost when this should have been 25 percent cost so therefore we have understated the depreciation instead of charging the rate as 25 we have just charged 25 20 percent so now what we need to do we need to charge further five percent depreciation and if we are charging this on cost so therefore it's a straight line method okay so we need to charge additional depreciation five percent cost now what is the cost of non-current asset it's given in the trial balance it's eighty-eight thousand. so what we need to do we need to apply five percent depreciation so if we need to increase the depreciation then it's an expense and if the expense increases so our profit would go down okay if the expense is increased depreciation expense so the profit would be decreased by how much 4400 and then note number five beta no adjustment have been made for allowances for irrecoverable debt that should have been maintained by four percent so what we need to do we need to see whether the doubt is increased or decreased during the year now let us see uh, how much trade receivables do we got better 13,000 and there aren't any irrecoverable debt there is only allowance allowances means provisions so what we need to do we need to apply the percentage on this 13,000 only and what is the percentage that needs to be applied is 4 percent so uh, this year the provision that is being required is 520 so sir do we have any provision already we have provision of 800 and now the 800 provision has now been reduced to 520 so if the provision is reduced during the year the, so therefore it's an income for the business okay so therefore we need to add up the difference between the two and in this case our profit would go up by 280 now there is a last error i guess error number six and no provision has been made for an injury claim for one of the alexandra's employees so one of our employee was uh, injured while uh, making the products in the factory maybe the injury claim would be 10 weeks loss of earning at 190 per week so what happened uh, because this employee was not coming for work because uh, he may be in the hospital he or she so therefore uh, 190 per week uh, business is lost because of that and if multiplied by 10 weeks so the total 900 was the cost for that plus a total loss of bonus 140 so there is another loss of 140 so what we need to do we need to add up both of these so the total loss was 2040 so because of this loss beta our profit was go down by how much 2040 now as you can see we have corrected all of the errors now it's time to find the corrected or revised profit for the year Okay, this is known as revised or corrected profit for the
so this is a profit that would be there if we haven't made errors at all okay now we just need to plus and minus these 5980 plus 2500 plus 2000 and plus 280 and minus 460 and minus 4400 and 2040 now the final or revised profit is how much beta it's 3860 so beta we have another requirement in this that is part c 